Chapter 4 of Crindle Cracks. Is it a crocodile? I don't know. Looks like some kind of nasty monster. I'm going to hold the book up this way this time. So we read Chapter 3. Um, Winston is scared. Wendy is a bit scared of Alvis. And Ruskin has gone to open the door. Alvis stood on the doorstep, glaring down at Ruskin. It's his son. Going through. Sparky was Ruskin's height. Oh, behind Alvis stood a Sparky Walnut. Sparky was Ruskin's height, had a face full of freckles, crew cut hair, and always wore the clothes of an American baseball player, including a black cap. Give me my ball, you useless splinter, Alvis growled. Ruskin handed the ball back to him. Lumps of marmwade were still stuck to it. You've made it all sticky, Alvis complained. Right, Sparky. Yes, sir. Sparky said. Sparky responded with yes sir to everything Alvis said. Clean it, Alvis demanded, thrusting the ball into Ruskin's chest. Why should I, Ruskin asked. It's your fault it's got our breakfast on it. You shouldn't have smashed it through our window. Besides, it was my ball in the first place. You stole it from me. Ruskin stopped speaking as Alvis grabbed his frizzy hair and picked him up. Alvis stared into Ruskin's eyes. Or rather, his thick lensed glasses. What a thin, weak, ugly, little splinter you are, Alvis said. Right, Sparky? Yes, sir, Sparky said. Now Alvis continued. When I put you down, I want you to pick every bit of stickiness from my repeat, my football. Understand? It was very uncomfortable to be held by the hair. So Ruskin said, all right. Alvis put him down. Ruskin wiped the marmalade from the football. Good little splinter, Alvis said, taking the ball back. Alvis walked away down the lizard street, followed by Sparky. Da boing, da boing, went the ball as Alvis bounced it. Ruskin closed, so here's a picture. As Alvis picking up Ruskin. Ruskin closed the door and returned to the kitchen. What nasty boys your friends have turned out into, turned into, when he said. It's only Alvis, Ruskin said. Sparky's just afraid of him. Then he looked around and asked, Where's Dad? Gone back to our bedroom, Wendy replied. He hid behind the glass cooker for a while, mumbling, It's not my fault, over and over again, then sneaks upstairs in a case there was any trouble. You know what he's like. Wendy buttered a slice of toast and gave it to Ruskin. Take this up to him, she said. He didn't have a chance to finish his breakfast. I'll be late for school, began Ruskin. Oh, I don't. Ask you to do much, Wendy complained. Just take it up. I've got all this mess to clear up. All I can see is toast and broken glass. Oh, Polly will doodle all the day. Chapter 5. I'll do two chapters today. It's only a page and a bit, this one. Ruskin's dad was sitting on the bed, surrounded by model animals. Some of them were made of fluffy material, some plastic. There were all kinds of creatures. Penguins, snakes, bats, elephants, lions, tigers... Giraffes, bears, seals, dolphins. Every time Winston got fed up, he would sit on his bed and talk to them. Ruskin put the slice of toast on the bedside cabinet and sat next to his dad on the bed. How are the animals today? Ruskin asked. Fine, Winston replied. The fluff's coming off the penguins, Ruskin noticed. It's not my fault, replied Winston. Years ago, before Ruskin was born, Winston had worked in a zoo. He wore a baggy dark green uniform with shiny buttons and a cap that wouldn't fizz over his frizzy hair. Winston had been very happy when he was a zookeeper. He loved all the animals and looked after them carefully. And then one day he got the sack. And he didn't have a job anymore. Winston missed all the animals. Their snorts and howls and grunts and barks, their feathers and furs and fins. Their distinctive smiles, the way they recognised him nuzzling in him with snouts or pecking him with beaks. So Winston started to buy little toy animals to look after. He threw imaginary fish to the fluffy penguins and imaginary steaks to the plastic lions and tigers. That's really sad. You didn't finish your breakfast, Ruskin said. It's not my fault, Winston said. Ruskin asked, Dad, why did you get the sack from the zoo? So why did he lose his job? I've told you before. No, you haven't. Yes, I have, insisted Winston, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Now go to school and stop bothering me. 
So, lots of unanswered questions. <laughs>